Hi, I'm Mona from The Gems, and you are watching We Go to Eleven. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. You know, one of the things that, that uh, I got a chance to see Thunder Mother when you guys were sporting uh, Scorpions, you know, and I had actually just gotten familiar with the band. Um, this uh, band of yours, you know, the the band as a whole. And then something happened about close to a year ago, right? I think it was close to a year ago that there was a departure. Uh, you know, what, what, what led up to that? Because, I mean, as a fan, it was disappointing, but now it's like you guys yeah, have moved forward. So that's, that's a positive. Yeah, I think um, that the guitarists can't stand to be, like, questioned or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, um, it was actually <laughs> me and Emily that talked her into having a, a group therapy because she... We found out that she found a new singer already uh, oh. before Christmas even. Uh, so she planned this uh, without us completely. And uh, <clears throat> when I heard her speak about it, there was only like personal reasons. Mm -hmm. She simply did not like uh, something about Kernika. Right. So it wasn't at all uh, like the, the work ethic or anything that you usually fire people for. So it was... Uh, it was only personal reasons, and uh, uh, we could not do anything else because uh, mm -hmm. uh, they also found out that we uh, we also found out that she uh, trademarked the name uh, a few years ago. So, oh. so we couldn't do anything about it. So we <clears throat> we decided to. Uh, she fired Ganika, and me and MB uh, decided to quit. And. Mm -hmm. uh, start some something new with Ganika. Right. So from the beginning it sounded like you guys had come together to to put some project I guess at that point or kind of move forward to, uh, from from a thunder mother, I guess. Yeah, we just wanted to move forward and continue what we did in in Thunder Mother. Yeah. Because like there's no time to spill. We just wanted to uh, continue play in a in a band and mm -hmm. have real band and a real democracy and uh, uh, just make something um, constructive out of the, the mm -hmm. anger of all the greed so, right yeah <laughs> so moving into with with the gems i mean because that's yeah. the that's the new band that you guys have uh formed yeah. put together you've released recorded released some music and stuff it, it, all this all this music is all fresh like uh brand new ideas or was there some stuff that was uh maybe in the vaults from previous times yeah like phoenix uh, was written by emily and uh, our producer actually mm -hmm. for the black and gold album with thunder mother but it didn't get it didn't get on that album and uh, of course we're happy about that now because that was the mm -hmm. perfect first single yeah. for us yeah yeah uh, undiscovered paths is uh the music is really old because me and emily had a band way back and uh, um that song was for our old band but we didn't oh, wow. make anything out of it okay and um, so we rewrote it now together and uh, it became undiscovered paths and mm -hmm. uh, Ganika wrote a song for her solo project, Running, and we, okay. we wrote that song to fit the band. So, so we had a few songs mm -hmm. uh, that we uh, like rewrote, put in different clothes, <laughs> you can say. Yeah, so. right. We sure. rearranged them, and uh, um, I, I'm very happy about the result. Right. So, I mean, yeah. you, you have quite a few tunes on this album. I mean, it's pretty damn packed. So I guess, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> curious to hear how much stuff you had to pick from. Because it seemed to me like you either had a lot to select from or you used everything. We had, I think we, mm, I think we had maximum 10 songs more. Mm. We, okay. didn't, we, we wrote the songs uh, during the spring. So we... We didn't have so much time to right. write. 
So um, it wasn't that many songs we we had, but maybe we we had ten more maximum. Oh wow! Is there a plan to do something with those down the road in the near future? Are they potentially you know usable for maybe the next album or something? Maybe maybe parts of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they weren't. We turned them down for a reason. Uh, right. There are parts in them that are uh, that could be used, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You always have a graveyard of songs, and uh, sure. uh, one day you'll pick up a song and you will find like this song is is bad, but this intro is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can you can maybe choose something from it and make something else when you see when you hear the song with fresh ears. Right, right. It, as far as as far as the name, tell me a little bit about the name because it has something to do with the initials, I think. Right. Yeah, yeah, we. <laughs> Which kind of kind of worked out in a way. Yeah, we played around with initials, and that was the most uh, obvious name, and we we thought for two weeks. <laughs> it, it sounds so short, but we we thought about the band name for two weeks, and we were so eager, uh, wanting to, uh, uh, you know, make an Instagram and homepage and everything, so we. We tried to come up with better names for two weeks, and uh, but we we just uh, stuck. We we just hmm. thought that gems could be, it could be good in the end. Right. It's a short name, it, and it has a meaning because it's like everyone is equally important. Mm -hmm. We it's formed by the initials of everyone uh, right. of us. So uh, and uh, and also uh, you can easily play around with the graphic uh, things around the name for like diamonds for example as we mm -hmm. did in the logo right right that was made by georgia cartier she was um, playing in tom the mother before us actually right wow <laughs> i mean it's a pretty simple uh name but it fits i mean it's a good fit too yeah yeah. So as far as things go, I mean, uh, I mean, we was just talking about the, the previous tour you guys did with, with Scorpions and stuff. What, what did you take away from that? I mean, obviously it was it was it looked like it was a fun time for you guys on stage during that, yeah. that, that performance that I would. Anyways. We um, the guys in Scorpions were really nice to us. Mm -hmm. And I think they. Um, Mm, they had a huge say in uh, uh, what support band they would bring on the tour. So we are forever grateful that they chose us. And it seems it seemed like they really enjoyed our music. Okay. Uh, so we are very happy to have, have gotten to meet them. And um, other things, I, I think getting you, you need to adapt your stage show to a bigger stage. Mm -hmm. So that was something I picked up during that tour. Okay. Because we we used to play in um, in venues, and then you look you look straight ahead, you know. But in arenas, you need to um you need to look you need to look like higher up. You need to uh, catch all of the people in there because mm -hmm. they are they're sitting higher up, and they are you you need to like make bigger moves and right. uh, really exaggerate everything you do on stage mm -hmm. because you look so small when you're looking down on the stage right and especially when you don't have a big uh, show as scorpions have they have all the lead screens and mm -hmm. need, uh, as support fans don't have that so you need to make uh, the best you can out of the stage and you're just yourself mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's something i i picked up from that right. tour, being bigger stages I, ideally for yourself i mean what's your pre your preference is it doing like an arena type show or is it or is it festivals or is it like you were just talking about you know maybe a smaller and more intimate type rock venue or something what's what's your preference every every place has its own thing and uh playing arenas uh, is of course amazing and uh it's completely overwhelming. It's uh, such a mm -hmm. great experience, but at the same time, you don't have the same contact with the people there. Mm -hmm. You you don't get the same interactions as you do when you play small venues. 
like a, a, a very small impact venue that's very special too right and uh, festivals are also so much fun because you play in open air and mm -hmm. you meet a lot of uh, uh, colleagues from the music yeah. Yeah, right. in the stage with other bands you know so yeah so all the different places has has its it own uh, things that you really right. enjoy yeah I've, I've seen some uh, live performances stuff uh, that you've done with as the gems here um as far as things go i mean do you guys plan on inserting any any um any material from from the thunder mother days or is that just kind of a no, a no go for you guys yeah we do that actually we didn't mm. do it on the release party but mm -hmm. we we usually play uh a, a, a small part of the show we play uh, the thunder mother songs that uh Okay. Emily, Emily and right. Gika, a big part of the songwriting in right. you know, from Heat Wave and uh, Black and Gold. So, nice. So we we have a small small part of the show. Sure. And and I think that's probably a, a good thing to kind of do just to kind of uh, get some of the keep some of the fans happy too, right? Yeah, because people want to hear. Uh, those found the mother song with the original singer mm -hmm. and drummer, but, right? Um, but of course, mostly the singer Sing. because the vocals uh, they have a huge impact on the on the sound uh, on the sound, right? And uh, because of course the vocals are uh, in the front and mm -hmm. people tend yeah. to listen to vocals more than bass, right. for example. Sure. So sure. of course uh, the fans want to hear the like the classic Thunder <laughs> Mother songs with Yannika's yeah. uh, voice on it. Is that something that you guys maybe second guess about doing, or was it always except you know talk uh, maybe talk and and agreed upon to do? Because I mean sometimes bands are kind of like yeah let's distance ourselves from that. Mm -hmm. um, that's in the past. You know this is what we're doing now. Um, was there any talk of that or was it just always kind of an, uh, an agreed upon thing that you guys would do some of that material? No, I think everyone uh, thought it was natural to play some of the songs. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, that was, wasn't a big discussion. We, we thought that the, the fans we have, they mm -hmm. got to know us when we played in Thunder Mother. Right. And, uh, yeah, Nick and Emily uh, wrote the songs together with uh, Philippa mm -hmm. and maybe a songwriter uh, also right. uh, in um, like for uh, uh, Black and Gold and uh, Heatwave. So um, I think it's, um, um, we thought it was natural to play them. Yeah. Yeah. I know you guys are a three piece, but you you require a bass player. I did see some of the live footage where you had a, a somebody pulling in on bass. Is is that something going forward that you're going to keep it as a three piece and and just en enlist somebody to do the bass parts live, or do you do you envision bringing in another member? Um, no, we will we will be a, tr a trio, uh, taking care of all the business. Right. right. We'll have a live bass player, as many bands do. Right. Uh, they, uh, yeah. As far as things go, I mean, is there any any talk of doing anything in the United States? That's where I'm based out of the United, and you know, obviously, it's kind of difficult for some of the bands from from uh, you know the European nations to make it U.S. But you know, that's always our hope that uh, there's some kind of a pack or something that comes where or bands uh, make it with other bands and, and, and do an extensive, or, you know, even a short tour of North America. Yeah, we are definitely planning for U.S. Um, it's not going to be this year because it takes some time to uh, to, uh, <clears throat> to set it up properly in PR-wise and with the visas and everything, but, but uh, maybe in uh, 25. Okay. So there's 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 a chance it could happen then yeah yes of course nice 
Um, you released, I think, your your third single. Is there going to be? Is there a chance for another one down the way? Uh, we released, I think, four singles. Four. Okay. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah, go ahead. The album is released now. Yeah. Also, and uh, we will release one more like focus track. Okay. Late in the spring, from the okay. album. Okay. All right. Yeah. Nice. As far as things go, you know, the the game plan is then to just focus on on Europe and festivals and stuff like that, and then maybe look at other other areas, maybe like North America, going into next year. Then is that the plan? Yeah. And any more, any more, uh, any any other surprises? Like, is any any potential uh, pairings with with another act that you guys are going to tour in, like Europe or anything? Anything in the works there? Uh, we we are in the discussion on on what band to bring on the tour, but nothing is set in stone yet. Is there a preference? Like, do you have somebody in mind that you go, "Hey, that would be really cool to get that band to, to support us," or maybe do a co-headlining or something? Thunder Mother. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting for sure. I mean, <laughs> no. But um i don't know we we have nothing uh, we're just uh, throwing in the names here and there but mm -hmm. nothing nothing is uh, no, nothing really yeah okay i get you <laughs> so, so the last thing i have for you i mean uh because this will be for we go to 11 which is a spinal tap b and a reference i love spinal channel. oh yeah you need to watch Final Tap at least uh, two times a year, so you don't. Oh yeah, yet. I mean, I just watched. I just watched it a, a, like a month ago. You know, it was on TV, and I was like, "Well, you know, it was already a half hour in." But I was like, "I got to," <laughs> you know. But do you have yourself a particular Spinal Tap moment that might have occurred throughout your career that you want to share? Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. There, there's, there's so much from uh, the movie. I, I like the the small details like Nigel is always chewing his fucking chewing gum and it's it looks so stupid. I mean he's just so stupid. But um this moment is not from the film, but it's from um I think it's from the follow up oh, uh -huh. movie. The live you know, the oh. live show. Yeah, the live they show. Are coming, they're coming down from the from, from the from, roof yeah. the ceiling. And then Nigel gets stuck there. For the whole right. song, I think that's just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, have there been any stage mishaps that have occurred to you? That they... um, all the time, all the time, all the time. We at the release party, we we played at a venue that had really bad, um, like air air conditioning system. Mm -hmm. like the the smoke was never going away, you know. So, and we had smoke on stage, like right, and it just got white. I couldn't even see my fingers, and the smoke wouldn't go away. It just stayed there for so long, for like the half of the song, and that was such oh, a no. spinal tap. You couldn't even see us. It was just white on stage, and Jeez. like you could see like shadows uh, right. going back and forth on the stage. Yeah. So. We yeah, that was a spinal tap moment only a few days ago. And um, with our previous band, we we played the first whole song without any light on the stage. Oh, like the, the light light right. guy did. He we weren't there for the first song, so it was mm. completely dark on the stage. And Yannicka oh. was like saying in the microphone, "Can we get some lights on the stage?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. That was a fine tap. <laughs> no kidding! Wow. Well, that, that's a couple. That's a couple good ones right there. I mean, playing <laughs> yeah. a song in the dark. Jeez. And you guys probably didn't miss a beat, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Thanks uh, for your time. I see you say the record's out. You have uh, four four singles out. We're talking about potential. You know, focus on Europe for twenty four. You know, some ring there, maybe looking at 25 or maybe even North America uh, hitting the radar there. Um, anything you want to say to the fans before uh, I cut you loose? Thank you for your support. It means the world to us that 
the fans are buying the the new album and it it means a lot to us. Uh, so thank you for that, and uh, we will get to America as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a challenge, you know, going overseas uh, economically, but we work on it and we will get there someday. And uh, isn't this new Spinal Tap movie coming out soon in March? Well, I think they're working on it. They're working on it. Uh -huh. So I think it might be out in 25. So, 25. you know, that might be something to some uh, in 2025, I think. I think they're just in production or something like that. I don't think it's complete yet. Oh. I thought but it was. I thought it was. Uh, it's going it's to be happening, though. No, it's happening. So oh, okay. that, that'll be something good to maybe uh, hit, uh, next time we connect if if it's out all, by that <laughs> point. But yeah, that's a that's a great film. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, and best uh, best so uh, with the touring for twenty four, and hope to see you in twenty five. Thank you. Thank right. you for having me. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.